lovely to see you guys. So this evening we'll be having an amazing class with Chef Trigge Fraser. How many of you have watched her shows before? Watched her show, seen her on TV, read up about her? She's an amazing person. She has a lot of energy, a lot of vibe that she'll be bringing into today's masterclass, and I really cannot wait for us to have a good time. Now, Chef, Tri Chef, Chef Trigue is someone who's skilled in cooking. She learned from the famous Le Cordon Bleu in France, and um, she's skilled in making dishes in over, from over 24 countries. Can anyone imagine that? Over 24 countries, and she's had the opportunity to make food and dishes for quite a number of... Um, Notable personalities such as Barack Obama, the Prince of Saudi Arabia, and rapper T.I. Ladies and gentlemen, this person that we're having on stage is not your regular masterclass facilitator. She has a lot of energy. Are you guys ready? Y'all don't look like you're ready. Are you guys ready? She's bringing you some, some um, action from Atlanta, Georgia, and she's a seasoned chef. She's done a lot in terms of cooking. She's currently the host of The Kitchen Sink. Anyone knows that show? And she was the first African-American to win the famous um, Food, Food Network star um, 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 TV event. So I hope you guys are ready. We're going to have a really good time today. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Put your hands together as we welcome on stage all the way from Milano, Georgia, oh, Chef oh, oh. Trigay oh. Fraser. off energy so let's try one more time I mean that was really good but one more time okay hi y'all <laughs> great fantastic yes. okay so before we move on into the show okay I want to ask her one question okay tricky tell us how excited tell us how excited you are to be in Lagos Nigeria you oh my us. god okay and I'm not even going to get emotional. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> okay, so I've been wanting to come to Africa in general for a really long time. And I really wanted to come to Nigeria, Lagos especially. So I'm like, man, you know, I didn't know if it was ever going to happen. And I just got blessed. And I got this beautiful phone call, and I've been excited ever since I knew I was coming. I was in Mexico last week thinking about Nigeria. <laughs> I was in Puerto Rico the week before last. I was thinking about Nigeria. <laughs> so I'm so happy to be here. We're going to have a good time. And I hope you guys really learn today. You are welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Yes. Now tell us, would you prefer to be called Trige for this show or by your Nigerian name? Oh, yes. Oh, wait a Okay, so I got a Nigerian name today. My name is Jamila. Whoosh. <laughs> Okay, so I posted on my Instagram today. I said, until I leave Africa, my name's Jamila. And maybe even afterwards. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. So thank so you for that name. Yeah. Great, great. So I'll just leave you right through it. I'm okay. going to the masterclass. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so we getting started? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, so we getting started. All right, so I think I'm going to start by, okay. We all, I know my kids anyway, we love to start with dessert first. Right? In an imaginary world, we will want to start with dessert first. So we're going to do that today because it takes a little longer to cook the dessert today. Mm -hmm. So how many of you have had bread pudding before? Bread pudding, anyone? Bread pudding. Okay. Bread pudding. So, okay, so what I'm going to do today is blow your mind. <laughs> so we're going to have bread pudding, but we're going to have, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're going to have peanut butter and jelly bread pudding. Next level. So what I like to do is I kind of like to show people how to take everyday cuisine and make it different, right? So this is one thing I want to show you guys. When you see a recipe, you guys, always remember, besides baking, bread pudding is the only baking recipe that you can manipulate. You can kind of do whatever you want to do with it. You can add, you can take away, and it really won't harm the product. Um, that's the only one in baking. But as far as savory cooking, if you get a recipe and you're looking online, the recipe is just the base, right? You are always supposed to put a little bit of yourself into that recipe, right? Because from here, you know, we want to show off, right? I know when I have a party, I want everybody to still talk about my party two weeks later. So the order, in order to do that, you have to kind of make it special. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the custard for this. Now, a custard is normally just a basically milk and cream and eggs whisked together with a little bit of sugar. You can also do a savory custard. 
just remove the sugar. Um, a savory custard would be considered like a blue cheese bread pudding that you can put with steak instead of your potatoes or your rice. So this is all about elevating and pushing your dish to the next level, right? So first things first is we're gonna start with the, egg, with the milk and cream. And I'm just gonna crack some eggs right in here. Just like that. I mean, I'm a professional, so you know. <laughs> I kind of one-handed a little bit. You know, try not to get any shell in there. Is that milk in there? This is milk and cream. And cream, okay. Milk, so and, milk cream. and cream. Yep. So we're gonna put the eggs right in here. And this is about five or six eggs, right? And then I'm just gonna whisk that together. Now what we're doing is we're making sure we whisk it together because you want the eggs to be fully incorporated. This is creating the custard for your bread pudding. You wanna get the yolks, you wanna make sure the yolks are broken, you wanna make sure the whites are ready. From there we're gonna add a little sugar Right, that's about a cup of sugar to two quarts of milk. We're gonna keep whisking it, whisking it, whisking it. So now we have in there milk, cheese, uh -huh. milk, um, eggs, sugar, yep. and some cream, right? Yes. So four ingredients already. Four ingredients four already. Ingredients and you know what, guys? Honestly, this isn't a lot of ingredients, really. Um, some of the best dishes are only made with about five or six ingredients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes four ingredients. Four ingredients. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna put some butter in here. Now, okay. you see I didn't melt the butter. It's okay because the butter is soft already. Okay. If the butter isn't soft, then of course, yes, you're gonna wanna melt it a little bit. Again, just give it a little whisk, right? So guys, what do we have in here now? Can I think I got milk on my nose. A huh. quick recap, someone. Great. Milk, what else? Eggs. And cream. I love like it. Some sugar, it. fantastic. You guys are following. <laughs> They follow me? I love it. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you want to do, we have the sugar in there. Now, that's it. That's the custard. That's all you need, right? And this is easy, an easy dish that's going to wow your guests. Next, we're going to take some bread. Now, you guys, I know you have bread in your house. The bread's going sour, right? And you're like, what am I going to do with this bread? Stale bread is perfect for bread pudding. The, the more stale, the better. You don't want to use fresh bread for bread pudding, right? Because the reason is we want that custard to soak into that bread. So what the custard is going to do is bring it back to life. So it's going to go from dead bread mm -hmm. to live bread, <laughs> right? Guys, so we, don't, tr don't throw away your stale bread. Okay? <laughs> don't throw it away. Yeah. So now I, what I do now, this is the key. Now this is the trick. Let me tell y'all something. I'm giving y'all, I'm dropping jewels on y'all today because normally people only use white bread, but I'm using croissant bread mixed with the white bread. Why am I doing that? Anybody know how croissants are made? Does anyone know how croissants are made? Anybody <laughs> in the house? How are croissants made? It's in round form, then you use it has a, no, uh -huh. um, a separate recipe, and you cut in a triangle, mm -hmm. then you fold in from the, from the base mm -hmm. to the top. Well, I mean, you are, you're a little Thank junior you. pastry chef, I see. But what I, what I wanted to focus on is the butter. You know, it's a lot of butter and croissants. Okay. So what does that mean? When this bakes up, it's going to be buttery. It's going to be moist. It's going to be so good, right? Next, we want to do, this thing is so easy, y'all. Boom, just like that. Just like that, right over the bread. Now, we're going to just push the bread down into the milk. <sighs> Good Lord. Right? So now the bread is sitting there. This is not something that you want to do in five minutes, ten minutes. That bread needs to soak for at least ten minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do it a, a little quicker today because we're here, but at least give it five, me five minimum, right? And as you see, I'm just breaking it up. There's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't have to be perfectly chopped. Nobody's going to know how it looks once it comes out the oven. You know, they're, they're not going to notice that you didn't chop it, right? So we're just going to push that down in there some more. And if you look at it, you'll notice you see it kind of getting thick. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's soaking it up a little bit. There was a lot of milk in there. Now the milk is kind of dissipating a little bit. Um, and from here, you want to kind of see creamy, white, uh, fluffy bread pudding batter. Same thing with this last piece of bread. Now, 
The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit. Now, I know, I learned that we love peanuts here, right? Mm -hmm. We love them. And y'all got the best peanuts. They're so tiny and good. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to add first a little vanilla extract. What is this ingredient? What's it this called? is vanilla extract. So this is the extract from a vanilla bean. Vanilla extract. Okay. Vanilla extract. All right. Right? Oh, yes. Please. I'm a little country, okay? I'm from Atlanta, so some of my, slang, my, my words are a little, <laughs> you know. I was at dinner the other night, uh, last night, and I said, let me get a Coke on the side. Child, he said side all night last <laughs> night. He was like, on the side, picked at me. All right. So next, we're going to pour the uh, peanuts right in. This is like really like a one pot. Just dump it in the pot. It's going to be easy and delicious. That's my thing. Listen, I'm a mom of two. <laughs> the easier, if it can be easy and delicious, I'm here for it. So we're going to put some peanut butter in here. So the peanut butter goes in now? The peanut butter goes in now. Okay. It's going to be nice and creamy. Now, the peanuts, you're going to get a peanut taste. But the peanut, well, the peanuts, you'll get a peanut texture. But the peanut butter is really going to push that peanut pay, uh, taste right through there. Now, if you're at home, I mean, you know, we're being fancy today because I'm in a class. But your head, these are the best tools for this. You just get in there and you just, you know, you massage it, you know. Hey, my old chef used to tell me, you got to treat your food like a lady, you know. <laughs> Treat it nice, you know, rub it down, make it feel good, you know. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So we mix it, mix it, mix it, boom, 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 right? This looks good already. All right, when you're done with this and you do this, it should smell like ice cream. That's how it should smell. That's how you know you've done it right. Obviously, we don't want to taste it because this is uh, raw eggs, right? So you just want to go off the smell. You also want to go off... I mean, what's sweet to you? What's, what's a great sweetness point to you? You know, um, I, she said I cook for cancer patients, so uh, where are the cupcake molds? Cupcake yeah. I cook for uh, cancer patients, so, you know, I have to kind of take away um, from some of their sugars. Like, they can't have sugar, but they can have honey, right? Um, another myth is that agave is great, but honestly, honey is better than even agave. Agave is very kind of, it's a really high non-sweetener. And even though it's a non-sweetener, it's really sweet to be a non-sweetener. So I even kind of keep them away from that. Um, if you want to do this and you want to make it gluten-free, you can. You can use gluten-free bread. If you want to try something, because you know vegan is the big craze right now, you can make this vegan. Okay. Um, instead of using the cream and the milk, you can use cashew milk or almond milk. Okay. Right? And instead of using the eggs, you can use applesauce. Guys, did you get that? So for the healthy eaters in the house, <laughs> if you want to do the same thing, you don't have to use the regular milk. You can use almond milk or what other kind of milk you can You can use almond milk or cashew milk. Now, cashew I milk. love cashew milk because it's, it's, do you guys have cashew milk here? Absolutely. Okay, milk. great. Yeah, because it's thicker to me. Um, a new one that actually just came out in Georgia is oat milk. Um, cashew milk brand has come out with the oat milk and you can make oat milk just by sitting your oats in a little bit of uh, water just a little bit and just kind of letting it release its own milk yeah, itself mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, so now from here I got my cupcake molds right I just put a little bit of oil in there hit them with a little bit of flour because we want to make sure we don't stick right and then I'm gonna go right in with the bread pudding now, it's okay if you fill it to the top. It's going to pop up like a little muffin, right? Okay. And honestly, the more the better, you know? I mean, don't be stingy with me with the bread pudding. All right, so we want to also mix this, and we want to make sure we got peanuts in every bite. We want to make sure we got peanut butter in every bite. That's really important, man, because honestly, if you're having a party, you'll be surprised. <laughs> How many people be like, I ain't get a peanut in mine. So you're like, whoa, wait a minute. So we want to make sure everybody's happy. That's the thing about throwing an event or throwing a party is making sure everybody's happy. Um, obviously, this has nuts in it. So if you do make this for an event at your home, you want to let people know, hey, there's that nuts in these. Because some people may be allergic to cashews, but they may think they're not allergic to nuts. I don't know, man. If you're allergic to one, you're allergic to them all in my book. <laughs> I try to stay away from it. Um, 
And that's pretty much that. Then next we're gonna kinda do, we're gonna do the blackberry sauce. So if you guys wanna finish filling these up and then I'll move on to the blackberry right, sauce. Great. All right, so was that easy? Okay, all right. So now we're gonna do the sauce that goes on top, all right? We're gonna do. Guys, please help me. Yep, we're gonna do a blackberry sauce. So with the blackberry sauce, only thing I'm doing, remember it. Always remember about me first, I'm a mom first. I'm busy, right? So I don't got time to be in the kitchen all day long. I want to get it in and I want to get it out. As quickly as possible. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make an easy, um, almost like a coulis. We're going to call it a fruit coulis. But that's, this is going to be the jam for the peanut butter and jelly, right? The, uh, the uh, bread pudding is the peanut butter, okay. right? Mm -hmm. The blackberry topping is the jelly, right? Okay. So now, one thing about this, we're in Nigeria. Of course, I wanted to use these beautiful, fresh blackberries. But if you are at home, this is the one thing. I stay away from the frozen section in the grocery store. But the one thing that I will always use from the grocery store frozen section is frozen fruit for sauces. They're the best. Why? Because they've been frozen. Um, and then once you start to cook them down, they're releasing those sugars. They're releasing that flavor, right? They've been sitting in that freezer, just getting ready for you. Then when you get there and you go pick them up, everything's all good. So just a quick question. The absence of blackberries, what other fruits can we use for this? If you don't want to use blackberry, you can use blueberries, raspberry. You can use any berry you want. Any kind of Yeah, berry. like my son, he loves blackberry jam, but my other son likes grape jam. I love strawberry jam. Okay. Maybe you want to do an apple jam. You can do whatever jam you want. As long as you do it in this order, you'll be just fine. So if you want to take some apples, um, now apples are a little different. You want to go frozen because obviously they're hard in texture, right? So if you don't do frozen, you at least want to cook them first, give them a little saute and some butter, peel the skin, saute them in some butter, add the sugar, boom, done. Great. Right? So for this, what I want to do, straight into the pan, dry, just like this. I'm going to go blackberries. Right? I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of guys following? cinnamon, right? And I'm gonna hit them with a little bit oh, of brown the, sugar. Yeah, brown sugar, now, cinnamon, and the blackberries. Yes. Now, when I'm doing this, you'll notice I only put a little bit of the brown sugar in at first, right? Because I just wanna give it some room to do its thing. And I'm also gonna just add, you hit that water for me? Just a sploosh of water. Not much. Just a little bit to kind of get it going a little bit. So we're just going to let that cook down. Eventually, right now they're hard, they're going to begin to cook. And the more they cook, the softer they will get. Then they're going to begin to bubble up. It's going to become a nice sauce. And then we're going to just add just a sprinkle of cornstarch. Corn yes, that cornstarch is going to thicken it up a little bit and turn it into that jam that we're looking for. Smells good already. How does it smell? Yeah. It smells good? So I don't know, I feel like somebody wants to cook with me today. Okay, so does anyone in yeah, the house? Yeah, let's go straight into the cook? oven with it. How do I? Well, hold on, let me put, let me put a little bit of a who's gonna cook? cinnamon on top of each one. Any kids in the house, she likes children. Who wants Any to cook? Kids in the house? Who I mean, don't, don't, don't sleep on the babies because the babies can cook too. She's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little baby. She's a baby. She's a little baby. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll go with you, I'll go with you. I'll who go you gonna pick? You're right there. Please Let's come. pick her. Oh, you picked somebody? Yes. Okay, we'll pick you later. <laughs> huh? No, that's good. Oh, yeah. Put a little bit of cinnamon on top of each one. Come on. Perfect. Up. All right, who's my chef? Come, come on, on, chef. What's your name? I'm Timmy Tayo by name. Meet you. What's Timmy the name? Timmy Tayo. Timmy. Timmy Tayo. Timmy. Timmy Tayo. Timmy Tayo. You got that. We're going to have to give you a <laughs> nickname, brother. <laughs> Timmy. What's your We're going to call you Lil' Timmy. Timmy. Great, Timmy. Come on, Lil' Timmy. Look, time I just need you to come over here and just whip this up for me, right? So what you're going to do is you see how it's bubbling up? I need you to start pressing as they get softer for me and make you some blackberry jam because you a boss like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, cast iron skillet. Here. So now, while he's working on that, we're going to get those, uh, the, the cupcakes are in the oven, so you'll get to taste and try. This is done. The bread pudding is done. It's in the oven. We're done. It's in the bag. Now, 
Next, fried green tomatoes. How many of you guys know about fried green tomatoes? Fried green tomatoes. I know you didn't Anybody? know because they didn't have any green tomatoes. <laughs> All right, so this is good though, this is good. When I came in the kitchen, she was a little nervous. She was like, chef, we don't have uh, green tomatoes. She was like, I was like, no, 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 that's perfect. Because remember what I told you in the beginning of the class? What I tell you? Huh? Yeah, you gotta kinda elevate your own recipe. So if you go in that recipe and you like, man, green tomatoes, I don't have those. That's all right, use a firm tomato right? As long as it's not super juicy. Now, the green tomatoes are a little unripened. They're solid lime green, right? And normally, they're really hard, almost like an apple. They have a texture of, oh, that's beautiful. Come on, chef. I don't even need any cornstarch. Now, if you do enough sugar, you won't need cornstarch. You see how it's bubbling and looking amazing? You see that? And it looks like jelly, right? Like jam. Mm -hmm. I mean, you a boss, you did that. I ain't do nothing. I'm just over here talking about tomatoes. Yes, so that's it, let's take it off. You wanna give it a taste? Do we got tasting spoons up here? I don't think we do. Okay, do we have tasting spoons? What do you we have tasting spoons up here? Yeah, yeah, spoons, spoons. All right, sure, so we are gonna sure, have sure, him sure, give sure, it a taste. We'll I'm let him spoon, tell spoon, you spoon, what spoon, 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 he spoon. thinks about his jam. See, I just put that all on him. All right, so again, the green tomato normally, like I said, it's very hard, it's like an apple. It has the consistency of an apple, but it has the taste of, um, it's almost pickly. It's almost like a pickle, but it's a tomato and it's really good when you fry it. Us country folk, mm, we love to fry everything, you know? You know, we fry tomatoes, okra, uh, whatever we can fry. So, we'll do it with this skillet. What I like to do, we're gonna turn this on. Can you turn, can you turn that on for me? We're gonna turn it on, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do thick slices of the tomato. Yes, please. We're gonna do thick slices of the tomato because the tomato is supposed to be nice and meaty, right? So like this thick. It should be like a steak tomato, which means you're cutting it the thickness of a steak, almost. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing here. Just cut that top off. Where my chef at? Did you taste your, um, your jelly? Did you taste your jelly? Did you love it? Oh, there she go. All right, so once he tastes his jelly, I'm gonna call up another chef, you know, cause we got to share the love in here. How does it taste? How it taste, chef? Is it amazing? I want you to tell everybody how your jam, how your jam tastes. Tell everybody. Tell the word. Just, I'm just going to use one word. Smurfalicious. What? What? Say it again. Smurfalicious. Smurfalicious. Smurf oh, we done learned something new. Now, you know I love a slang word, baby. Oh, Lord, I done learned something new. Thank you, Chef. Thank you I so appreciate much. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to call one more person up because this person is going to help do the tomatoes while I make the jam. Okay. All right, so who's my one, come on, I promised her. I promise, don't worry, we got one more that'll come up later. I promise this one right here though. All right. Hello, you're welcome, what's your name? Hi. Your name? Tamara Priye. I'm sorry? Tamara Priye. Tamara Priye, Tamara, Tamara, Tamara you're Priye. Tamara. Tamara Priye. <laughs> Tamara. <laughs> we gonna call you TT. Okay. <laughs> Come on up, TT. You like that name? Yeah. Okay. You know, I got to make sure you like it. All right. So what we're going to do, TT, is we're going to bread the, do you know how to bread things? I'm going to teach you a little something, something today. Don't worry. I got your back. It's all good. All right. So first things first, once I'm slicing these tomatoes, let me hurry up and slice these. Let me get real chefy on y'all right quick. All right. Once I slice these tomatoes up. I want to season the tomatoes. Now, this is another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Seasoning, seasoning, seasoning. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we make the shrimp and grits. <laughs> Can't forget about those. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to season it with a little sea salt, right? A little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to do the same thing with my flour and my cornmeal, right? Because let me tell you something about me. 
Don't you bring no bland food to my table. I need my food seasoned. All right, so we're going to stir this up, right? Same thing here. So what I want you to do is come here. Now, this is the breading process. We're going to put the milk in the middle. So first thing we're going to do is take your tomato. You can turn that down a little so, bit, the fire. Turn that down. Uh, just turn it down. Okay. So, all right, let's go. I'm going to have you do it. See, this is how easy cooking is. Now, another reason why I'm using volunteers is not because I'm lazy, but it's really because, you know, I do teach junior chefs and I teach kids and I teach cancer patients. And one thing I try to teach people is cooking is easy, man. Like, it really is. It's really about pre preparation, right? Preparing yourself, getting yourself ready, getting your mind right and saying, hey, you know what? I want to live. Like, okay, now I know everybody's going to yell for this. How many people want to live? What? Wait a minute. Mic check. <laughs> Hello? Hello? One more time. How many people want to live? Yes, and in order to live a long life, you got to stay out that fast food line, and in order to do that, we have to what? Get in our kitchens and cook. It's really important. All right, boom, so come on over here. So with breading, the first thing you want to do, you want to come into the flour. You want to shake it off, right? This is going to hold the milk to the tomato. We're going to go into the cream. Pull that out. We're going to go into the cornmeal, just like that, right? That's your tomato. Then we're going to come over here. Now, you see this oil is hot. When you put in something in the oil and you don't put it towards you, we're going to go away from you, right? Because I like my face and my, and my hands. <laughs> I think I'm pretty cute, you know what I mean? I don't want to burn my face off. So we're going to come in and we're going to go away. You see how that splashed? But it splashed that way, right? I mean, y'all far away. You're good. Yeah. We won't get you. All right, um, we need tongs. We got tongs? Okay, so now I want you to go ahead and do that. I'm going to wash these tomatoes while you do the bread in. Let's see. Yeah. Boom. All the way in there. Don't be scared. Get in there. Right. Push it. Push the bottom part down, too. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Now where we go? Straight into the egg. Perfect. Boom. I mean, you're a professional. <laughs> Who are you? Do you need a job? All right, let's go. Now you're going to go in. Now go away. Nope. Ah, ah, away. Ah, <laughs> ah. We're going to do it one more time. Now see, <laughs> now this is a life and death lesson. Right. You know what I mean? Hey, because you saw when she put it in, I was like, ooh. You ain't gonna get me. I tried to warn you. All right, let's go one more time. Get it in there. Shake it off. Practice makes perfect. Nobody's perfect the first time. That's why we gotta practice. Beautiful. In there. Come on, you got this. All right, you ready? No way. No way. <laughs> let's go. Why did you do it again? <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Good job, you did it. Everybody give her a hand. She did good. She breaded it. Thank you so much, thank you. All right, we gonna get one more person because somebody in this room. One more person. You gotta give me hope. I need to see that you can fry this, this tomato. I'll leave you to select the person. Let's see who I wanna pick. I already picked somebody from this section. I'm just go. <laughs> there you go. You saw me. Come on, Blue. All right. It wasn't me. It was nature. It was God's plan. All right. Hello. You're welcome. What's your name? <laughs> Happiness. Happiness. Nice Are you ready? You. Did you see the breading process? I need you to bread it. I need you to dump that thing in the oil for me. I'm going to watch you from back here. No, I'm just playing. Okay, come on. Go ahead. Wash your hands real quick. All right, now, you guys. It's all right. Now, this flame is flaming up like that because these are red tomatoes. They are juicier. Everybody know water and fire. They just don't go together. However, 
um, if you bread them properly. And I mean, she did a great job breading them. It's gonna be nice and crispy. I mean, look at this. You see that nice crisp? nice and crispy and crunchy on the outside. When you bite into this, man, it's going to be all about the texture. As soon as you bite into it, listen, when you eat food, it should be an experience, right? Don't just eat to eat. I mean, don't just eat to eat. So, so when you... We'll take a couple of questions mm -hmm. from, I'm sure there are loads of questions in the Oh, audience. yeah, go ahead, ask some questions. Yeah, so does anyone have any questions from the audience? Any questions? All right, you ready? Let's go. All right, so... Your name and your question. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, my name is Daniela. Hey. Hi. I wanted to ask, in place of the peanut. In place of the what? Peanut. Uh huh. What What else can we use? Oh man, you can do whatever in bread pudding. You can put a. Uh, you can just do jelly, no peanut. You can do cashew. You can do almond if you just don't want peanuts. Um, you can do. You can just stay away from the nuts all together and just do the jam on top and maybe put some chocolate in the middle. Um, you can do chocolate in the middle and do like a vanilla cream on top. All right, let's go. I'm nervous. So guys, Don't get scared. You can do okay. Of okay. Now this time when you do it, because <laughs> that was like a, she was, you know what I mean? She was kind of like, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. You got it, girl. You did it right. Listen, if you just lay it in there like this, like a, like a queen. You got it. All right, so look, I'm going to show you one time and then you do one. Boom, boom. Same thing we just did, right? Here, here, and then we're going to go just like that. You see that? That was nothing. We're going to put a little bit more oil in the pan. And while you put those in there, I'm going to start you guys on the jam because I'm looking at time and we want to keep our time going. So Any more questions in the meantime? Any more questions? Hi, my name is Doi. Oh, I wanted to find out what you. heat your te what temperature you have your heat on. What temperature the heat is on? The heat is on for the, the tomatoes. bread pudding. No, the tomatoes. Oh, the tomatoes. Let's put your uh, heat on medium high heat. If you're gonna use a cast iron skillet, don't go too high, especially if you're using olive oil because it has a very high smoke point. So you want to go to medium high heat in the cast iron skillet. Yes. All right. So, All right, so really quick. We're going to go ahead and make, okay, you go ahead. You're a boss. You got this. I mean, I trust you. We'll come back. So what I'm going to have you do is come on over here. You're going to finish the tomatoes for me. You got this? Do I need to cut you a check? Oh, okay. So we're going to come here. And then what I want you to do here, look, just flip those tomatoes. Right? Boom. Boom. All right. So now we're going to make a onion jam so we're doing a lot of things today you remember i told you about jams they can be sweet or they can be savory right this one is going to be savory onion jam is great on um on pork great on chicken steaks um and really good on these tomatoes so what i want to do is i'm going to take this now you see these skins right here you guys would you throw these away if you were at home yeah right no <laughs> No, you wouldn't. This is what you do with these. I don't know. Okay, now I know I'm going to get a good rise on this. Who likes to save money? Uh-huh. Uh yeah, money. I knew I would get that one. <laughs> yeah. So what you want to do is save this. Never, ever throw your scraps away. If you have these, if you have zucchini, squash, tomato, save it. If you don't want to make vegetable stock that day, put it in a, in a Ziploc bag and throw it in your freezer. When it's time to make your vegetable stock, you just put it in a pan with some garlic, all of these vegetables, throw it in there with some water, boil it, and now you save, what, $8? You don't have to go to the store and buy veggie stock. You made it yourself. And it's going to taste better because you made it. <laughs> right? All right, so next, I mean, those tomatoes are looking amazing. We're going to give these a slice. I'm just going to julienne slice them. Right? And then we're going to get our our oven on. Can you turn this on for me? And we're going to get this on. Have anybody had onion jam? You had onion jam? Oh, you got a question? Uh, Boom. Okay, a question. Okay, I'll go on that one. That's fine. Right, so who's going to question you? Your name and your question. That's perfect. Those can come on out the grease. 
All right, hello, my name is Victor. Um, I just want to say something with respect to the onion that you, um, uh -huh. you mentioned. Uh -huh. uh, I, was, I learned that um, onions are kind of magnets to bacteria when you cut them open. Uh -huh. So when you say we can actually use them for future purpose, how safe is that? I don't know if... I'm sorry, you said that they're what now? Um, I learned that um, cut onions... Hot onions? Cut onions, onions that it's cut open can be a magnet to bacteria after, you know, after it's first used. Oh, yeah. So, oh, you mean for what I was saying about the vegetable side? About or the about onions. these in general? So there's this regular notion that onions, once cut, it becomes toxic. So a lot of people tend not to keep onions in the fridge because they feel like it becomes toxic and dangerous to consume. So Oh, no, that's a yeah. new one. Uh -huh. I heard it out. Don't worry about it. I, I, you I heard right? that before, too. Yeah, no, you're good. It's <laughs> fine. It's safe. I do it all the time. I, I, make my, I make gallons of vegetable stock. Right. Um, if you go to my house right now in my freezer, I got a big old Ziploc bag full of veggie pieces. Um, and when it's time for me to cook it, I pop it out the freezer and I put it in here. Now, if you're nervous about it being in the refrigerator, fine, put it in the freezer. You know what that's going to do? Freeze the life. Nothing can happen in that freezing zone. It's frozen. There's nothing that's going to happen, and it'll last in the freezer for four to six months. So if, you, if it still makes you uncomfortable, just put it in the freezer. It's fine until you're ready to use so it. Very quickly, Trigay, what's the temperature in the oven for the bread pudding? Uh, it's at 350 degrees. 350 degrees. 350 degrees. It's oh. making me nervous. I wish oh, we could get it higher. Any more oh, questions from okay. the back? I will go to the back. Okay, we almost there. Whew, Jesus. Yeah, um, not yet, almost. Hello. I just thought it wasn't cooking. My name is Elizabeth. All right, so we got it. Is um, somebody talking? Yeah. Oh, hey, girl. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. So my question is, um, the breaded um, tomatoes, what do you serve it as, as an accompaniment or as a salad? What do I serve with what? Do you serve it as a first course or as an accompaniment to a main meal, the tomatoes? So are the tomatoes an entree? Is it a dessert? Oh, is it's an a, uh, appetizer. Oh. It's an appetizer. I'm going to dress it up when Thank we're you. done. I mean, it can be an entree if you want. Like, honestly, I, I was a vegetarian for a while. So, um, and then I became vegan. You know, I'm all over the place. So, at the end of the day, that would be a great meal for me to have because it's thick and it's meaty. And I can eat it with that goat cheese and, you know, have it with the onion jam on top. And it fills me right on up. Or if I'm having a party and I want to impress people, that's a go-to right there. Okay, Trigay, we have another question from the okay. back here. Very good afternoon to you. Hi. Yeah, I, I think I got an idea of what your favorite food will be. When you just said, if you come to my home, you are going to see dozens of salad with me. So I, I guess salad could be your best, uh, something that you like so much to eat. I don't know. But my question is, what is the best, what's your favorite everyday food? And what is the favorite food you ever cook for the public? I, I heard that uh, Obama, President Obama, former President of America, Barack Obama, was one of your audience. He was a, a, a member of the audience. Oh, what did I show. serve Barack Obama? Can you give us, can you give us a, uh, um, a clue about what to cook that day and if Obama oh, was Oh, y'all don't want to know that Thank story. <laughs> That's like five questions in one. <laughs> I know. I'm like, Thank where do you. I start? Where do I start? Okay. okay, so the first question is, what's your favorite meal to cook? What's my favorite meal to cook? Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, choosing your favorite meal is like choosing your favorite child. You just don't do it. I, I cook food from all over the world, so I cook with my mood and my emotions. You know, sometimes I feel like eating a lot of Indian food. Sometimes I don't. You know, sometimes I feel like eating oodles and noodles. Though. I don't know. It just depends on what, how I feel. I, so I eat with, with my emotions. I test things out a lot. What was the next question? I know we had like six and one. <laughs> And the uh, next question, what he wants to know is, what did you cook for President Barack Obama? Okay, so that story is funny because I actually, um, <laughs> I was a chef at a restaurant in Florida at that time. And so I went and I, I had just made a duck confit ravioli for my chef. And uh, I was just testing it, you know, trying it out. It was the end of a long day, y'all. I had been working all day long. So I was really tired. At the end of the night, um, he says, hey, you got any more of that duck ravioli? I was like, I mean, it's in the back, but I ain't cooking it, right? And so he goes, please, you're going to want to cook this. You're going to want to cook this. So I'm like, okay. 
I really don't, but okay. So I made it. He said, I just need two plates. I made it. When I was done making it, he goes, uh, you want to see who you cook for? I said, not really, <laughs> because I was so tired. I had been there from 5 in the morning, and he was like, you're going to want to see. You're going to want to see. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> he sends the plates back. They're empty. I come out to the front. I'm putting my apron on, and I look up, and I go, <laughs> I had never been, I've never been speechless a day in my life, but that day I really had nothing to say. So, Trigay, yes. everyone wants to know what these are, so what just went into okay, the pot? Okay, so now? what just went into the pot was a little bit of balsamic vinegar, right? And now I'm getting ready to put some brown sugar in here. What's that brown sugar? So it's balsamic vinegar. Guys. Yep, balsamic, balsamic vinegar, vinegar is in there. Now we're going to add some brown sugar here because this is the jam that's gonna go on top of those fried green tomatoes. That's perfect. I mean, can we give it up for the fried green tomato queen? Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, now I need a pot so we can get the grits started and then we're gonna, we got 13 minutes, we're gonna bang this shrimp and grits out. Like that's how quick it is. We're gonna let the jam cook down. The jam has to simmer down because it has to turn into a jam, a jelly. Um, your onion should be completely submerged in balsamic vinegar. That's gonna add on to that flavor. It's gonna make it mm -mm good. All right, so we're gonna come down here. I need a pot. We don't have pot. A pot. All right, so how many people have shrimp and grits? Wow, I love it when the plan comes together. So shrimp and grits is a delicacy in the South. If you don't, listen, if you have ever had grits, just don't say you're from the South. Just, just chop it up. A lot of us up. don't know what grits is. So, so is a lot grits? of you guys don't know what grits is. It's, um, um, if you have had polenta, uh, what was the other thing? Pottage? Pottage. It's kind of like pottage. But um, it's very grainy. You'll taste it today. Is this, it? this is it here. It's very grainy. So we have this for breakfast in the morning. We have this for lunch in the morning, for dinner. Listen. It's not a day, and then I need a saute pan. It's not a day that we can go without our shrimp and grits or our grits. We eat grits normally in the morning with bacon, eggs, whatever. Um, in the north, they put sugar in their grits, so eh, they're kind of weird. Um, and in the south, we just love some good old grits and butter. Good old grits and butter, that's all we need. So what I want to do first is I'm going to put in, thank you. I'm going to put some butter in here. We're going to kind of do two things at once. I'm going to put some butter in the pan. I'm going to put some butter. Can you turn this on, too? Okay. And then uh, the olive oil. I'm going to put some butter in the pan and get this going. Next, after I put the butter and let that melt a little bit, I'm going to begin to add my garlic. So, guys, that's butter and then garlic. Butter and then garlic. Right? Then to this pan, I'm going to add some olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to this pot, too. So we're going to multitask. Don't try this at home. No, let me stop. All right, so we're going to turn this around. Now, what you want to do with this garlic is you don't want to burn it. You just want to smell it, right? You should be able to smell it. So now that it's going, I want to add my grits into this pot. So that's the grits going in. This is in, the right? grits. These are the grits. Now, normally, and you guys are lucky because you're getting my grits, and I got the best grits in the South. So what we normally want to do is you normally will add... Um, a lot of water to it, but I add more cream than water, right? So I'll add about 60% cream. So Trigue, what is this? What now is this, this is chicken cream? stock that I'm pouring in here. You don't want to do all cream because then it'll seize up. But when you do a lot of cream, what that does is it makes it taste like it has cheese in it, and it doesn't. Okay. That's pretty much what it does, right? Us putting that garlic in there is kind of just building onto that flavor. So we're going to pour this right in. And this is the cream going in, right? And this is the cream going in, yes. Okay. So we're going to stir that up, and you'll see how it should look. Are you guys following? When it's done. Uh, okay, this is on. So now this is on, and we're getting our garlic going. Now that the garlic is going, I can kind of start to smell it. It's becoming aromatic, right? So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add my shrimp. 
So into the pan that has olive oil and garlic, mm -hmm. she's putting in the shrimp. My shrimp, okay. and then I'm gonna do some tomatoes. Now you notice I'm putting them in at the same time as the shrimp because I want that garlic to infuse into the shrimp, the shrimp to infuse into the tomato, and it's to end up to being one big flavor bomb. That's the point of the story. And next I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna add a little bit of Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder. Onion powder. Right? I'm going to add a splash of lemon juice. Some lemon juice going in, guys. I don't think this is a... Uh, let's turn this up. Or is the wind blowing it? I think the wind is blowing it. Let's move it over here because it's not cooking. All right. So now that's going to go. We don't want to move those tomatoes until they begin to bust. Once they begin to bust, then we know we're ready to go. Now, I don't know if you guys can see the inside of this pot. Yes, you can, perfect. But you see, we gotta kinda move the edges and you see how I'm constantly just stirring that? But it's nice and creamy. That's the consistency that you want. You want that. It's almost like porridge, All right? I'm gonna stir that up. Now, I wanna add a little bit of corn cream to it. Now, this isn't normal, so but it's my normal. <laughs> so this is the same thing like when I told you guys Should that... You, what is that ingredient? So that last thing was corn cream. Corn cream, guys. Yes. Corn cream. The last thing was corn cream. And basically what I'm doing with that corn cream is it's adding more of a creamy texture. With grits, you want them to be creamy. If it's not creamy, then it's not right. Um, you also don't want it to be gritty and grainy. You want it to be nice and smooth and silky. All right. Now, you guys see our onion jam is kind of come together a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more balsamic because I want it darker. Okay. Right? I'm gonna let that cook. Our grits, let me get the salt and pepper. And we're gonna have a whole meal before it's all said and done. All right, so the grits are done now. That's how quick salt they are. And black pepper. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. So the grits are done. Right? So now we got our tomatoes. We're sauteing these up. We want those tomatoes to bust and explode. That's important. We're going to hit that with a little bit of salt. We're going to hit that with a little bit of pepper. And now, while that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and plate up the tomatoes. We have uh, plates. Guys, any questions? You smell this? You want to oh. find out something? Are we following? Is everybody following? Yeah. Has anybody learned anything? Yeah. Do you feel inspired? Yes. yes. Hi, Trigger. That's the goal. Hi. Um, I want to ask, the kind of milk you use, I, I want to know if it's evaporated or if it's um, powdered milk mixed with water. The milk? Yes, you use no, for the No, it was the heavy cream, pudding. it was uh, cooking cream, and regular milk. Okay. It just made it thicker. Um, if you want, you can use um, heavy, just heavy cream if you want it nice and thick. Um, you can also use buttermilk if you can find buttermilk. Okay. Um, and if you can't find buttermilk, you just take regular milk and put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it. It'll break it up like buttermilk. Okay, I also want to ask, the tomatoes, the last dip you did before it went into the oil, what was it? That was cornmeal. Cornmeal. Corn meal. Corn so meal. we did the flour just to hold on to the milk. Then we put it back into the milk, and then we want to hold on to that cornmeal. That's going to give it that crispy texture that we're looking for. Great. All right? So mm -hmm. now a little bit of plating going on here. We're going to put our tomatoes here. Get them nice and Line them up. Okay. Then we're gonna take some goat cheese. Y'all ever wonder how a chef looks in the kitchen when you're ordering a lot of food? <laughs> Just like this. Back and forth, back and forth. All right, so we're gonna take this. We're gonna put this right on top. It's gonna be so good, y'all. And it, look, I know you're looking like, what is that? Watch. Just watch, I promise you. We're gonna do a little bit of goat cheese right on top. Is that cheese? This is goat cheese. 
So we'll put a little cheese. bit of goat cheese right on top. If you don't want to use goat cheese, use feta cheese. If you don't want to use either of the two, just don't use cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use goat cheese or feta, right? Yes, you can right. use goat cheese. Where are those tasting spoons? Tasting spoons? Um, always taste your food. Now, the tomatoes, I know they're amazing. The goat cheese, I mean, it's goat cheese. You can never go wrong with goat cheese. But you, what you don't want to do is have an event and then all your people come to your event and they're like, um, she forgot about the salt. She said she didn't want no salt today. Perfect. I think I do want to add a little bit of salt to mine. Give it a little sprinkle. Right? And let's just mix that together. Let's try this again. Mm, perfect. All right, so we're just going to take this. We're going to go right on top. Right on top. Look at that. Same here. Right so on top. Chicken, we saw that you used a bit of um, chicken stock. Yes. In that um, recipe. So the chicken stock was to kind of thin out the grits because sometimes when you're using heavy cream, it can get really, really thick. Right. Yes. So in the absence of <laughs> these kind of chicken stock, can you just boil your chicken and use the stock from it? Um, yes. Now you can make your own stock. Okay. You just take the bones of a chicken. Right? I like to build that flavor though. You want to start with a little olive oil, some garlic, right? You want to throw those bones in there. Get the bones brown. Right. Then add in your veggies. Remember that cut up onion I was telling you about? Yeah. The end pieces of your carrot, your celery. Throw that in. Stir that up a little bit. Smell it. Your house should smell amazing. Then you pour in your water. Right? And then you throw in any odds and ends of herbs and spices that you may have and just boil it. The longer you boil it, the better it tastes. Right? So we're going to come here again. These tomatoes are almost blistered. I just need the tasting spoon. And I need a plate so we can plate this stuff up. Okay. Yes. Yep, I'm ready. Can we pull out the bread pudding out of the oven? Mm, okay, everything's done. I need the plate. Oh, okay. We're gonna plate this here. Hmm. We're gonna do some grits. Can anyone smell what I smell here? Can you perceive anything, guys? Right? Then we're gonna put this right on top. Oh, look at that, beautiful. You see how that tomato's blistered up? That's what you want. And you put that right on top. Right on top, that's beautiful. Pour some of that sauce on there. Great. Right? All right, that's the shrimp and grits. And then the last thing we'll plate up will be the bread pudding. Ooh, look at how perfect that is. Oh, my God. We got a plate? Wow. Plate, plate, plate. plate Perfect. I feel like I'm on cutthroat kitchen. All right. <laughs> Raising the clock. All right. We got the plate going. Let me see if I can get another one out easy. I can't. All right. No worries. We're going to come over here. Behind you. All right. And we're going to put the jam right on top. Guys, this is looking so good already. Right? It's so good already. So guys. now you're getting your party started. You got your fried shrimp and grits. I'm sorry, you got your fried green tomatoes as your appetizer. Right? You come on out with the shrimp and grits and you finish it up with the peanut butter and jelly bread pudding. Now that will impress anybody coming to your house for your event. Ladies and gentlemen, a three course Ooh. meal done in. <laughs> one hour. Give Trigay a round of applause. So Ooh. there are people in the house like me that love to eat. You like anybody who loves food? All right, we got it done. Who wants to wants some? Everybody? Well, how am I gonna, how am I gonna choose? Oh man, my man's in the front, gotta get some. My bo <laughs> That's my buddy right All there. All right, Chris. <laughs> That's my bro, he gotta right. get some. I mean, you sitting next to my husband, so you gotta get some. You gotta get some. All right, taste the spoons. 
Oh, you just gonna pass it out. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get some breaks. Two questions, very quickly. Two questions. You already have two questions from here. Oh, you wanna give them one piece? Okay, huh? So everybody can try it. Hi, Trigue. Hi. Um, I wanted to find out the corn. Um, Where's it coming from? Where's here, it coming from? Right here. Oh, okay. The the corn cream. Uh huh. The cream corn. For, yes. Um, how do we make it? Can we make it? You can make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you? So you basically take some corn kernels and you just cook that down with some. Well, start your pan off with a little bit of olive oil. I always like to start it off with a little bit of olive oil and build that flavor up with the garlic and the onions. And then after that, I put the corn in there cook it down with some heavy cream, let it get nice and bubbly, and then throw it in the blender. Now, you don't want to blend it to oblivion because we still want little pieces of corn. So just like, zoop, 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 and you should be done. How was that, being the first African-American woman to it was, win it? It was crazy. You know, yeah. I mean, because like I, I am the first African-American woman to ever win it. Yeah. It was brutal. It wasn't easy. It was yeah. two months of what is going on? I don't know what I'm gonna do, you know? But um, I made it, so it's just all about pushing through, persevering, and yeah. it doesn't really matter that you're not the normal. Yeah. You know, you make it the normal. Yeah. You are the new normal, and you know? And how has that impacted your career, if at all? Oh, wow, a lot. Um, I've, my fam my supporters have grown. Yeah. Uh, my business is growing. Um, I'm able to travel all over the world. I'm here in Nigeria, I mean. <laughs> um, I just left from Mexico, Puerto Rico. Really? So yeah, now I just travel the world doing cooking demos and, and doing what I love, you know? That's dope. So where are you going after this? Um, after this, oh, New York. Nowhere oh, interesting. Okay, well. <laughs> That's cool. okay, so we heard that you're a chef at a cancer awareness center. Yes. And that is really important. Oh, How it's important. How can other people find ways of giving back to their community? I mean, that is a huge responsibility to teach these people how to nourish themselves right. better. Like other people in their own little ways, how can they give back to their own community? Um, I just tell everybody, take your gifts and spread that love and light wherever you can. You know, yeah. I'm a chef, so I'm able to educate people. I'm, I know about food. Yeah. I know what's good for the body. I know yeah. what can help you. I believe in it. I believe that food's a healer. Yeah. And so I want to make others believe that. If yeah. you are an artist, feed people with your passion and your art. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you are a designer, you know, you can do that same thing. Give back to a school and make some, you know, little shirts for them or whatever. There's oh. always something you can do for your community within your passion and your gifts. Okay, cool. So you were telling me that your kids, well, you told us all that your kids prefer the dessert first? You know oh, yeah, I mean? my kids, they prefer dessert seven days a week. <laughs> However... Um, I try my best to keep them away from it, but they always, <laughs> mom, and then I'm always recipe testing, so right. they end up winning anyway. Okay, so what's your favorite uh, snack? Wow, my favorite snack. Mm, right now? Guilty pleasures. Wow. I don't have a favorite. It's hard for me to pick what? a favorite. Okay, what's your guilty pleasure? Like, I like tasty one? cakes. <laughs> That's awesome. Just uh, tasting them? Just, no, tasty cakes. So tasty. Um, you guys don't have them here, but I'm from Philadelphia originally. Really? So they have these little things called tasty cakes. And okay. it's a butterscotch cake with cream cheese icing on top. Man, Wait, I hope my trainer's not watching this, but yeah. How are your teeth doing? I mean, they're amazing. I don't eat them often. My trainer wouldn't allow it, but okay. I do eat them when I can. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you've been in Lagos how many days? Three days. Okay. Have you tried any of our very spicy food? Yes. Last okay. night I had broken rice. I had jollof rice. Nice. nice I had nice. grouper. I had Ooh. grouper, a grouper okay, fish. The fish, the fish. I had the spicy beef. So ah, suya. Suya. Oh, girl, suya. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told him, I said, I want to be sweating when I'm done. And boy, I was sweating. <laughs> it was that's really good. good. That's yeah. Good. Cool. Cool. So are you going to come back? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely coming back. I was sad because I thought I wasn't going to get a lot in, but I saw a lot. I went to a few art museums. I yeah. walked the Canopy Trail. That was pretty scary oh, wow. and okay. great. I know, I'm going to go to the beach in the morning. Oh, nice. And then I'll fly out. 